I'm going to draw a picture of this. All right, so basically what it says is that if you've got a polynomial curve, all right, and you're looking at it on an interval from A to B, you are, and they're, they're opposite signs, one's positive, one's negative, you're going to be able to have at least one real root. All right, so let's visually look at this here. Okay, let's say I've got an f of x curve like this. Okay, and then some interval from A to B. Okay, I want to look at this between the interval from A to B. Okay, well, down here would be f of A, and it's clearly negative. I plug A into the function, it spits out a negative value. So f of A is negative down here. If I put, put some value B, which I don't care what that number is, I plug it into the function, it's going to spit out an F of B right here. Well, obviously, it's above the x-axis. It's going to be a positive value. Okay, so basically, it says if I've got some interval and I plug the numbers into the function and one of them is positive and one of them is negative, I know that at least one real root exists. All right, at least one real root exists. Okay, now, where's that root? Well, the root is right there. That's the root. All right, now, I say at least one real root. All right, if I don't know what the actual graph looks like, like I just have the algebraic function, I haven't sketched it, I haven't put it in a graphing calculator, I don't know what it looks like. All right, technically, couldn't I go through these two points but cross the x-axis more than once? I mean, like, right, couldn't I? Because couldn't I... Couldn't the curve do something funky like this, come through here and then do this and then come up through there? Okay, so I could cross in more than one spot, but a bare minimum, the only way for me to draw a curve from this point below the x-axis to this point above the x-axis and stay in that interval, I have to cross the x-axis, which gives me at least one real root. Okay, so basically, all right, I'm going to have a function, okay? Maybe say f of x equals x to the third minus 4x minus 6, okay? So just a nice little baby function there. And then I want to know, does it have a real root between, and then they're going to give you a couple of numbers. Does it have a real re root between 2 and 3, maybe say? All right, that's the question they're always going to pose. All right, now they could give this to you in interval notation, okay? They could say in between two and three, okay? So they could use interval notation with square brackets on there. It's the same question, doesn't matter. All right, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to plug two into that function. So you're going to plug two in. So two to the third minus four times two minus six. All right, you're going to work that out, and I believe it's negative 6, which gives you a negative value. Then you're going to plug in f of 3, so 3 to the third minus 4 times 3 minus 6. You're going to work that out, whatever it turns out to be. I believe it's 9. That's a positive value, okay? So as long as I get one of them negative and one of them positive, does it have a root? Yes. All right, if you get two negative numbers, it does not have a root. If you get two positive numbers, it does not have a root. Okay, so um, obviously I speed it up there at the end because the bell just rang at 255 and I don't like to hold you over. All right, um, I'm going to leave that up for just a split second longer. Okay, because if you were writing slow, all right, you might have missed this. Um, this is, all right, page four of the online notes for section 2-3, day two. Okay, so all of this, what this whole thing, but this example and everything is in the online notes if you need to look at it and you want to download it. All right, so I am going to stop.